The concept and process of Treat to Target is really setting clear goals for um, IBD and how to achieve remission of IBD. And so um, we are going to discuss our goals and then lay out a process for monitoring whether we're achieving those goals. It's a matter of working with the patient along with the provider and coming up with specific goal-oriented approach in regards to specific targets, short-term targets and long-term targets, and how we could get there and how could we assess. In the past, IBD care was mostly focused on clinical symptoms, so people feeling well. But what we know is that isn't the only parameter that um, affects how people do with IBD. So ongoing uncontrolled inflammation causes damage to the bowel. There can be ongoing inflammation in the bowel even when symptoms might be improved. So um, our goals are not just feeling well, but also knowing that the bowel is healed to prevent um, damage that can put people at risk for needing steroids, being hospitalized, needing surgery in the future. But in the past, we really count heavily on patient symptoms. And if the patient was feeling well, doing well, then we kind of leave them alone on their current medications. But now with Treat to Target, we know we have a lot more tools in our toolbox to really test for certain things and really modify the disease. When we are setting goals, we would start out by talking about you know what is most important um, you know to the patient. Are there life goals that we're targeting? Are there symptom goals? When we have a patient in front of us, we have certain ideas in our minds as the providers, but we definitely want to tap into how the disease is affecting the patient's personal lives. We're going to work together to decide on a treatment plan to achieve those goals that we talked about. And as we're talking about different treatments, you know, patients have different values. And so some people will say, I want you to tell me about what you feel like is the most effective therapy. Some patients will say, I'm really worried about risk and I need you to talk to me about the, the lowest risk therapy. And then we're going to lay out a timeline. So this therapy that we've selected, this is how long you know we expect it to take for that to work. Um, and at this time point, we're going to recheck your blood work. There's things that we're going to be following. So no matter what our treatment strategy is, we have a framework and a roadmap you know, with the ultimate goal of, you know, patients being well and preventing damage to the bowel in the long term. I can think about when I had my first really bad flare. And for a long time, I've always been really afraid of pursuing any of the biologic medications that would require me to inject myself with the medication. To me, that was a fear that I had. It was something that I didn't really want to pursue. But through you sharing my goals with my physicians about how, you know, I want to be able to remain in school and do well in school and not have to worry about my IBD, we were able to sit down and have a conversation and talk about how we might need to pursue those medications and it might make you feel a lot better. One of the things we had to do is look into which biologic medication my insurance would cover, see which was going to be affordable for me, and also which ones offered copay assistance programs as well so that I could try to limit my costs, but also get a medication that was going to help me reach my goals. There are different levels and definitions of remission. The easiest level would be symptom control. So when patients' bloody diarrhea is improved or abdominal pain or blood in their stool um, are improved, then or resolved, then we have clinical remission. Another um, type of remission that we hear mentioned is steroid-free remission. And we know that long-term use of steroids is very dangerous in the long term. And so our goal with all of our therapies is to avoid use of steroids. And then you get into endoscopic remission, <clears throat> where patients with osteoarthritis colitis or Crohn's of the small bowel, distal small bowel, or colon are involved. And you want to see those ulcers heal up. So initially they may have active redness or erythema or ulcers in their colon. After treatment, when you do a colonoscopy, you want to see those ulcers heal up and back to a healthy looking lining or mucosa of the bowel. There's also a marker that we follow called histologic remission. So when we take biopsies during a procedure, is there inflammation that we see microscopically?
Throughout this process, we use various biomarkers and testing modalities to help us stay on track and get the patient to where they need to be to stay on target. Those may include blood tests. So for example, C-reactive protein blood tests may be utilized. Also stool tests like fecal calprotectin. We gotta consider other manifestations of Crohn's or colitis on other systems of the body, um, including vitamin D deficiency, iron deficiency, other micronutrients to, to monitor for. We also look at some testing related to the specific medications that patients may be on. Um, that we call therapeutic drug monitoring. We might say, you know, I see that that blood marker of inflammation hasn't changed. Maybe this is time that we should be doing therapeutic drug monitoring and checking your drug level, being sure that we're treating you with enough medication for you to be getting the full effect. Other than that, then we get into radiological testing like MR enterography or CT enterography, and then ultimately we have the gold standard of colonoscopy, upper endoscopy or, or deeper upper endoscopy, it's called enteroscopies. When I was a busy college student, it was really a huge hassle living in a dorm, trying to submit a stool sample, for example. I had a lot of worry and fear over that. And also going in for a endoscopy, for example, getting a colonoscopy in the middle of my busy schoolwork schedule was challenging and came with its own kind of stresses and worries. But through being able to have open conversations with my doctor, I felt much more kind of willing to go in and get that colonoscopy, get that um, stool test, because they knew the impact that those tests had on my life. Um, and also knowing too that the results on those tests would give my doctors the information they needed to help me reach my goals and get to where I needed to be. One thing is you could re-evaluate the target, make sure it's a feasible target. The other thing you could do is change the progression of where we're going in terms of medications or lifestyle modifications for the patient's IBD. I think when we're um, implementing a treat-to-target approach and a target isn't reached, then we want to stop and decide, you know, why haven't we reached the target? So um, with the medication that we're using, um, are we treating a patient with enough of the medication, the right dose? We might need to adjust the dose or adjust the frequency that we're giving the medication. We want to decide whether that mechanism of treating inflammation just isn't working for that person. And in that case, we might change the therapy altogether. But maybe we've sort of partially reached our target, right? Maybe things have partially improved, but we're just not all the way there yet. And maybe we might consider adding another therapy. Or we might find out that, you know, we've looked and, and our therapy actually is working. We've healed the bowel, but maybe people have, you know, someone has ongoing belly pain, for example, and maybe there's something else that's causing that abdominal pain that we also need to address. And so I think that we need to stop and reassess why are things not working in the way that we expect. No matter what our strategy is, being sure that we are being really proactive at, you know, reassessing at each point in time. And another really important thing that I think all patients should do when working with their physicians is always kind of have a next step as well. You know, what happens if you know, I start feeling worse. What should I do? Um, what should we do if in two weeks I feel the same, for example? By asking those questions, I feel like I have a plan moving forward so that if anything does come up, I know what we need to do next. Well, now that you know what treat to target looks like, make sure to talk with your doctor when you visit them next or your care team about treat to target and it could be something as simple as you know could we go ahead and get some kind of blood test even though i feel well i want to make sure i'm doing well on the inside or i realize i haven't had a colonoscopy in a couple of years is this the right time to have a colonoscopy life changes quickly um, and you might not think to mention to your doctor that you want to become pregnant in the next year or that you really want to travel or that something has changed so I think making it a priority to really bring up at every visit, you know, what's most important in your care um, can really help to be sure that, you know, we're achieving the targets that we want, but we're also making a decision um, that feels right and feels good for you. Because, you know, this is a, a disease that is chronic and we want to be sure that you are living your highest quality of life with this disease. The ultimate goal for all of us is to really 
get us to a, a appropriate and practical target with our IBD. So let's work together to help each other out to get to that goal. My advice to all the other patients out there is to just always be open with your physicians. They need to be able to hear how you're feeling, even though sometimes it might be really difficult to talk about how you need to you know, leave a family event to go use the bathroom, or you're having trouble with your work because of some of the symptoms that you're dealing with in regards to your IBD. Be forthcoming with them. Tell them how you're feeling and tell them where you wanna be. So that way you can work together to try to get you to a place where you're both happy with your IBD management and you can take steps to get towards a life that you wanna live with your IBD.